Hi, welcome to Staxpeditions on Tour. Um, our crew from Iowa is here in Las Vegas for the American Library Association Conference, so we stopped by Bowman Rare Books to say hello to Rebecca Romney. Hello. And uh, find out about beautiful books that they have here in the store and about how dealers and librarians work together to make research happen in special collections. And we'll be looking at some really fun books together, so really good books. So look forward to it. Here we go. <laughs> Every time people hear that this book exists, they're just thrilled by the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is such a pleasure to page through it and to discover all of the different, um, oh, maybe they call them woodcuts, all the different woodcuts in here. Uh, there's a variety of sort of atmospheres and styles, and you have that kind of Alice light motif here, mm -hmm. that in most of them. And it is one of those delights that everyone should know about. Mm -hmm. Well, and Alice as a story just has such a cultural resonance. Right. I mean, people know it. They have some interaction with that story in some iteration. Also, because the story's out of copyright, so it's been able to be recreated and reinvented, and in that way, anybody can make Alice their own. So right. it's the story that, that just cuts across everybody, and everybody has some sort of interaction with Alice. Right. It is interesting how it's resonated because, of course, Alice wasn't the first book to be kind of for fun for kids. It's, it's sort of often cited as that because it has been so influential as that, but it wasn't the first. Mm -hmm. But there was something about this that just that resonated with people, and you can see how big of a variety of audiences it can resonate with when you see someone like Dali doing... Uh, an illustrated edition of it as yeah. compared to someone else. I mean, Ten Yale's illustration versus these, or Arthur Rackham's. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see all these different interpretations of, of the same narrative. Yeah, that's one of our fav my favorite classes that we have come in. We have a class at the University of Iowa that comes in just to look at Alice illustrations through time. And you can see culture, you can see you know the history of, of how we of how we interpret things visually in general, but right. also the increase or the changes in how we interpret the story over time and which parts sort of grow in emphasis or decline in emphasis and it's totally fascinating and plus you get to look at all the best Alice books all at once all next to each other that's a win-win <laughs> yeah there was a similar story I think with Wizard of Oz uh, the first the first wonderful Wizard of Oz had Dorothy looking one way and then mm -hmm. when um, there was a fight with Denslow about future works of Oz, they uh, Bow ended up going with a different illustrator who took a very different take on how Dorothy would look, and, and we have this iconic idea of Dorothy in our heads that actually doesn't look anything like what the first edition Dorothy <laughs> looks like, so kind of fascinating to see those different interpretations and, and mark those as records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Alice in particular goes back and forth in the media since there's a silent movie, and, and more than one, actually. And uh, some of the editions that we have are actually book versions with illustrations from the movies, right. you know, alongside the increasing number of illustrated versions being published in. My new favorite mm -hmm. thing, by the way, is... <laughs> so, you know, the History Channel did a... a sort of miniseries based on the Bible? Yes. They did a book based on the miniseries. <laughs> Not kidding. A book yeah. about yeah. the miniseries, the Bible, uh -huh. by the History Channel. It's almost as good as adapting a book to the screen and then novelizing the screen. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of meta. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, we like our stories in different ways. That's true. And adding all of that visual interpretation completely changes the interpretation. Yeah, it does. Exactly. And then you change it back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So on the one hand, it sounds absurd and it's very funny. But on the other hand, it was created for a reason. That's because mm -hmm. this was a new interpretation or this was a distinctive interpretation mm -hmm. um, that they wanted to produce in a different format. I have not been unknown. I, I, I do. I have on occasion read the novelized version of, of a work that had been interpreted for the screen or television. Look at her. She's not sure. Which one? Yes. <laughs> Come on. 
Well, the one I'm looking forward to most is I have just ordered the novelization of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, the oh, right. interpretation of yeah. Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. We've got a segue there since we've got one yeah. laying right on the table. Um, and interpretation on YouTube of the story of Pride and Prejudice that has now been novelized. Yeah. Because it's a new interpretation that changed things. We can remove that confession in post. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we need to remove in post-production. <laughs>